Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. If you're watching this, you're probably either a LEGO collector or a LEGO investor. Take your pick, either way it doesn't matter to me because the information will help you no matter what. Today we're going to be looking at the top 10 sets that are available now, which I think will have a really big payday once they retire. And starting off at number 10, the UCS A-Wing. Now this is a big set, so when it retires, just by default, it's going to go up in value just because it's again expensive but this one wasn't as popular as i thought it would be i really like this model but i just don't think it gets a ton of love even though it is a fantastic set and i just don't see the value going up a crazy amount but obviously it will go up when it retires and number nine we have the boba fett helmet from the helmet series i think this helmet is really going to go up in value once the new book of boba fett show comes out and who knows if it will retire alongside when the show comes out or if it will be afterwards or not. I'm not exactly sure. That show is going to make the helmet a lot more requested and then it's going to go out of stock. And then once it stops coming back into stock, people are still probably going to want it and the value is probably going to go up quite a bit. And also it's just a really nice helmet set. It is definitely one of the best ones out there. Coming in at number eight, we have a set released just in this year, the January wave, in fact, and that is the X-Wing set. And the reason I think the value on this set is gonna go up is for the same reason the value significantly went up on the Tantive Four set, which retired last year. And in that set, it was Bail Organa, which really shot up to price because it was the first time LEGO actually made that minifigure, which was really surprising. And this X-Wing set is the first time we've ever seen General Dodonna and I don't know when LEGO's going to remake that figure, but it isn't going to be anytime soon. So I expect that once that set retires, people are going to realize, oh wait, that's a pretty cool character that I want to get. And then just because of that one figure, the price is going to go up. Also, Princess Leia, Luke Skywalker, and R2-D2. R2-D2 and the Luke aren't super exclusive, but the Leia with her dress piece is also a pretty cool figure to get in just a $50 set. So I think because of those two figures, obviously General Dodonna more than Princess Leia, that set is going to become pretty valuable. And the model is just really nice. The new wing mechanism is great. So overall, a really great set that I think the value is going to show in a few years. Coming in at number seven, we have Kylo Ren Shuttle. And the reason I think this one is going to go up is a little bit of the same reason that I just explained with the X-Wing, and that is a few specific minifigs. Um, the cool First Order officer that comes with that set is awesome. Great character from the movie, and you only see that character in that one set, and I wouldn't expect to see another one for a very long time, if that. And there's also two of the Knights of Ren, which we don't see in any other set. So if you're trying to complete that Knights of Ren collection, that's a set you're going to want to pick up. And if a lot of people, like me, are not picking it up because they have the old gray version, once the set retires and people decide to finally get around to getting it, I think the value is going to go up because a lot of people want the set because it's iconic and it helps complete the collection and it's more accurate than the old one. And some of the minifigures are really cool and unique to this set. So because of all those different things, I think its value is going to shoot up. It's also a big set, so the price is just going to go up more by nature. Next, we have the Star Destroyer, and while some people might just consider this set the Grey Triangle, it is a really, really awesome set. And again, it's one of those expensive sets that when it retires, the value is just going to go up a lot because it's an expensive set. But I do think this set has potential to become really valuable in the next few years. Maybe not right away, but in the next five years, I think its value is really going to go up. And that's because the last time we saw a Star Destroyer of that size was 2002, and they just made it again a few years ago. So there is a big gap between when I think they'll make another Star Destroyer of that size. This one is definitely the best model of any Star Destroyer we've ever seen. It's definitely the most accurate Star Destroyer we've ever seen, and the biggest. So that makes it a two for one. It's awesome. It's a great set. And even though it only comes with two minifigs, which aren't that cool, it's really the set itself that's going to make it all worthwhile in the end. Now we're halfway through this list, and here we have the 501st Battle Pack. I considered putting this one up higher, but I think part of the reason that it's not going to become as valuable as some of the other sets is the craze for the set. So many people have been going out of their way to get it and get a lot of it that I think once it retires, there will be a lot of people who already own 10 to 20 of these and won't want to buy more. But the main reason I think the value is going to go up on the set is one, it's a new style clone trooper, which we might not see more of for a while. It's a 501st clone trooper, which is really iconic. And also, 
according to rumors, there's not going to be any battle packs in the next year. Which is very disappointing, at least for me personally, and I'm sure a lot of other people will agree. And if there's no battle packs, there's no way to build your army, and that's the only set that you can build your army with in the foreseeable future. So, once the set retires, if there's no more battle packs, I expect a lot of people will come back to the set, because it's basically the cheapest way to get four clones. Alright, coming in at number four, we have the... Millennium Falcon, not the not the big huge one, the newest one, the one with Bullio. Yeah, that's that's the reason that this is number four. I think Bullio is going to be huge, and also there's a lot of great minifigs in that set. I'm not going to list them all off, but here here's the picture. And there's a lot of great minifigs. I really do think that Bullio is going to be a a pricey minifig, just like Bale or Ghana. I don't know that it could just be me, but I think that this set is really going to go up in value once it retires. I don't think it's really going to be that popular until after it's already gone. That's just the way some things work, and I really think that's going to happen here. So, I don't know, this is kind of my, my weird throw-in that is kind of just my own little speculation, but I really think Bolio is going to be a, a big fig. So we're down to our last three sets here. This part did take a very long time. But at number three here, we have the Moss Eisley Cantina. This is a $350 set, which has been incredibly hard to find in the past few months. It sold out within an hour the last time it came in stock, and it's one that a lot of people want to get their hands on. With 21 minifigs and a lot of exclusive minifigs and a lot of new minifigs that I'm sure a lot of people were surprised haven't been made until now, this set is the perfect set for a LEGO Star Wars fan and a fan of the original trilogy and that really iconic cantina scene. I think once the set retires, people are already having trouble finding it now. Once it retires, it's going to be nearly impossible to find, so the prices are just going to go up a lot, and it's a really cool set. Again, 21 minifigs is awesome. Even though it's $350, that's a lot of minifigs. And I'd expect to see this set go up in value a lot after it retires. So at number two, here we have the Razor Crest. And while this one could have been higher, could have been lower, I think it fits right in here at number two. Um, before, one of the big reasons this set was so valuable was that Grief Karga minifig. And even though it didn't have any leg printing or anything, it was a new fig for a really cool character that a lot of people wanted to get their hands on. It looks like we're getting this, that figure this summer in a $40 set instead of a $130 set. So most people are probably going to go for that. And there's rumors that there's going to be leg printing on that one. So it's not really the minifigures, it's the ship itself. For anyone who didn't watch Mandalorian Season 2, stop now. But if you did, you know the Razor Crest got blown up. I wouldn't expect LEGO to make another version of this unless they made some kind of UCS model, which I kind of doubt. So as far as I know, this is the first and last version of this ship that we'll probably ever see from LEGO. So once it retires and a few years have gone by and it never comes out, then it's going to be worth a lot more. Also, if Season 3 of The Mandalorian is as good at least as Season 1 or 2, um, there's going to be new hype for this ship just because it's iconic to the show, even though it probably won't be in the show. It's just a great symbol for the Mandalorian and the show. I think a lot of people are going to want to get their hands on this. And before we get to number one here, I have two honorable mentions. And the first one is the ATST Raider set, which a lot of people thought would go up a lot in value, myself included. Um, but I'm not sure. There's been signs that the Cardoon minifigure is not going to disappear. I, they may have recasted the character because the Hasbro action figures of Cara Dune and this set are still available and since uh, Disney is in charge of all that they could just simply take all that out and just kind of lo lose the Cara Dune altogether but they're keeping the figures out which tells me they're either going to recast or it's just not as big of a deal as far as the merch as I thought it would be so I wouldn't expect the set to go up a ton in value at least at the moment but it does deserve an honorable mention on this list because it is a really cool set. Our last honorable mention here is the Luke's Land Speeder because we all know that it's going to retire soon. It's going to be very sad because we might have to wait an entire year before we get another Luke's Land Speeder. And I don't know about you guys, but it'd be really nice if I could get my hands on like my ninth Luke's Land Speeder because who doesn't want nine Luke Land Speeders? So get that while you can because if you miss out on it, you might have to wait at least maybe six months before they make another one, which would be really, really sad. 
And now number one, the set that I think will increase the most in value after it retires and I think you should pick up now before it's too late. That is Darth Vader's castle. And wait, before you say, wait, what is Darth Vader's castle? That's the reason why, because it is unique. It's, I, I can safely say, I don't think it will ever be made again. And there are a lot of great minifigs. It's a cool thing that is actually from the movie, Rogue One, and from other parts of Star Wars, not just the movies. It is a really cool set, a really clean looking build. You get a nice little TIE fighter, and then you get a custom Darth Vader kind of out of his suit, just hanging out. And then you get a really cool reprinted um, hover tank pilot with blue. And then you get some other great minifigs that aren't exclusive to the set, but still really cool minifigs. The set is a steal for 130 bucks, but once it retires, it's going up a lot in value. I've seen a lot of people on YouTube who have mentioned that they've bought several of this set to kind of stock up for when it retires. So I expect more people will continue to do that as its retirement date gets closer. So this is a set that I would see going up in value really quickly after it retires because we'll probably never see it again as a new set and it's just a really great set and since it's from the movies it's still really iconic even though it's kind of a minor thing. Anyway thanks for watching this video hopefully I will I've helped you guys out in your search for Lego investments or just cool sets to get before they retire. Obviously this list isn't completely factual. This is based off my own estimations, guesses, and a little bit of research. So if I'm wrong, I wouldn't be surprised if I was right. Good for me, I guess, but I don't expect to know exactly what's going to be happening with future LEGO stars because I'm just a guy sitting in my room recording a video. So I really have no idea. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.